Well, good morning. In February, when I saw the title of Tino Galicia's sermon on the Holy Spirit, I thought, oh no, I've been working on a sermon the whole, on, the, on the Holy Spirit also. I'll have to throw it away. But as I listened, I realized his and mine were different, but complementary. Another surprise when I found out Mike Harrell was going to be preaching on the Holy Spirit last Sunday. Think about this. All three of us had been inspired at about the same time to speak about the Holy Spirit. Certainly, this is an example of the Holy Spirit at work among us. Wow, do you think God is trying to tell this congregation something? Tito presented a very complete definition, but here's the essence. Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, also called the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost. It is the third person of the Trinity, along with God the Father and the Son, Jesus. It's the presence of God as part of our religious experience. My sharing this morning is about the manifestations of the Spirit, mainly in my experiences with the Holy Spirit. As Mike Harrell said last week, Jesus promised the apostles that he would send the Holy Spirit after his crucifixion and resurrection. The Spirit came to the disciples of Jesus on the day of Pentecost. This was when the disciples were given the gift of speaking about Jesus in the tongues or languages of the foreigners who were present at the gathering. Speaking in tongues is somewhat controversial. Some churches rank it as an important gift to speak in tongues of angels or heavenly language. Dr. Andrew Newberg, University of Pennsylvania, conducted a study of the brains of persons while speaking in tongues, found that the mind is not aware of what is being said while speaking in tongues. Bible makes it clear that when speaking in tongues, there should be also one who interprets what is said. Many theologians think tongues are the least of the gifts and should be used with caution. A friend of mine, Randy, who eventually became a minister, told about attending a college religious event where a man was speaking in tongues and another was interpreting the message as blessing God. But Randy's African exchange student friend became very upset and walked out of the meeting. Randy followed him out and asked him what was the matter. The African said the speaker was talking in Swahili and was blaspheming God and praising Satan. Well, that's not good in my book. On the other hand, our friend Don Holt told how he once saw a car stopped on the roadside, so he pulled over to see if he could assist. The people only spoke Spanish, and he did not. But as he tried to help them change the tire, some Spanish words came to his mind that aided greatly in the process. I believe this is the proper use of tongues for helping another person. Now I'd like to share a few of my experiences with the Holy Spirit. I hope these remarks might be in some way helpful or enlightening for some of you. When I joined the church years ago for the ceremony, I chose the option of making a statement. I had written a few topics I wish to mention on a little note card, but when I called, was called to the pulpit standing before a couple hundred members, I could not find the note. Talk about stage fright. My addled brain recalled the very beginning of my remarks, and I went ahead. Vaguely, I was aware of Reverend Scott sitting behind me, whispering praise of the Lord a few times. Sometime later, lay speaker Walter Long was giving a sermon and remarked about some things I had said that day. My reaction was, what? I said that? I didn't recall saying such words. Was this perhaps a case of the Holy Spirit speaking through me? My first real experience with the Holy Spirit was when I was laying in bed, sick with the flu, suffering from chills and my body aching all over. Linda's brother Wayne came by and offered to pray for me. 
He took my hand, and as he prayed, I felt a warm, tingly feeling coming up my arm and spread through my body. Almost immediately, I felt much better. The pain and chills disappeared. Praise the Lord. Another time was on our first chip trip to Europe. We arrived in London, and we were so excited to see all the historic sites and tramped all around. Next morning, I had a terrible case of leg cramps. I did not know you're supposed to get up and walk it off. Linda and I kept massaging my leg, but it didn't help much. We set out for another day of sightseeing, but every 50 feet or so, my legs would cramp up with pain. I had to sit down and try to rub them. We finally reached the side of Winchester Cathedral, and I sat down with my back to the wall. While Linda went to the front to see when tour times were. I began to have such negative and dark thoughts about how can I carry on this way? Do I have to rent a wheelchair or crutches? Our trip is ruined, I thought. Beware of those kinds of negative thinking. Then I noticed a sign that said, No dogs allowed. This is holy ground. It made me realize I was an idiot. Not the first time. I should have been praying about this. As an aid to prayer, I would imagine a door on top of my head opening to let the Holy Spirit come in. Kind of silly, but it's worked for me. And very soon, I experienced that warm, tingly feeling coming into my head and running down my body and through my legs. And the pain in my legs was gone. Amazing. I stood up and walked. Can one always expect, expect that warm feeling? I mentioned before in church how I'd strained my sciatic nerve and was limping for months. When I went forward for Pastor Allison's healing service, I neither expected much, oh ye of little faith, nor felt anything. But on leaving church, I suddenly realized I was no longer limping. So it seems that those warm feelings are not prerequisites for healing. Everyone experiences things differently. Louis Marcelino has shared many of his experiences with me in uh, participating in the healing room and how people were healed through prayer. Here's another strange phenomenon. One night at Pastor Mary's Monday Night Baptist, study. She was praying very earnestly, and as I sat there with eyes closed, I saw images like radar waves emanating from her direction with my closed eyes. When she stopped, they stopped also. I've never experienced these images before or since. It seems perhaps the Holy Spirit is transmissible. Another experience was when Pastor Latou was praying and a, a couple from his former church in Nevada came to visit, and she was sitting right behind me. As he fervently prayed, she was softly saying, Amen, and praise the Lord. I began to have the feeling that the Spirit was flowing between them, and I was right in the path of that flow. I felt like it was going right through me. Very strange. It seems many people are subtly led by the Holy Spirit to do things to help others. Remember Pastor Mary speaking of one, when one has a gut feeling, meaning guts, or God's urgent tugging? Here's an example of the whole, how the Holy Spirit works through timing and place. One Saturday, I was setting up scarecrows in the churchyard to create some atmosphere for the harvest dinner and later Halloween carnival. At one point, I went outside the south gate to hang a sign on the fence. A homeless guy I recognized walked by and asked for the pastor. I explained she was not available, and I asked what he wanted. He replied that he wanted the phone number of the director of the homeless rescue mission in Visalia so he could get into the program. So it happened I had his card in my wallet and gave him information. Think of that. I was only out there for less than five minutes. If he had walked by a few minutes earlier or later, we would have missed each other. It's crazy, but God's time 
is, timing is amazing. Another similar story involves those two homeless brothers who lived in a van and came to the Monday night Bible study. One evening, they called me for help because their van had broken a wheelbarrow and needed a ride to the auto parts store. I went over and drove one to the store. When we returned, there was a man laying down and working on the damaged wheel. I noted he was wearing a little tool pouch on his belt. It turned out he had been a mechanic before becoming homeless. I remarked there was quite a coincidence that he happened by to help. He replied, it's no coincidence. It's the man upstairs. I said, well, what do you mean? He replied he had been walking along, and a voice in his head told him to turn right at the next corner. He walked a couple of blocks, saw the van jacked up, and went to work fixing it. He said this has happened to him several times. Amazing, right? It is said coincidence, coincidence happen when God chooses to remain anonymous. To sum up all these anecdotes, avoid negative thinking, to experience the work of the Holy Spirit with or without any sort of warm, tingly feelings or speaking in tongues. Three, remember our Methodist motto, open doors, open hearts, open minds. Be open in your mind to God's possibilities for you. Be open to ways you can help yourself or a person in need. To continue, I would like to share this online message I found. One, the Holy Spirit helps us to have a better life if we listen. Two, but what doesn't get advertised is the Holy Spirit's ultimate purpose is to call us into greater levels of obedience. Three, if we're not careful, we will turn the Holy Spirit into a life coach that assists assists us in the pursuit of our own goals instead of his goals. For the Spirit of God's intention is not to help us in our personal mission, but to press us into greater submission to God so that we can bear much fruit in the world. These thoughts on the Holy Spirit are for us to ponder and apply to our lives. Addendum. At completing writing this sermon, when I heard something from my dentist, I think it's so interesting, I had to include this. A prison guard heard a preacher speak on Philippians chapter 2, verse 11 says, And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. But the preacher said an evil person cannot speak the phrase, Jesus Christ is Lord. The guard decided to test it. In his prison was incarcerated Richard Ramirez, an avowed Satanist who had murdered 40 women. The guard approached Richard and told him how the guards had access to any food they wanted and he could give him a big Thanksgiving dinner. Of course, Richard liked the idea. The guard said, all you have to do is to receive the dinner is say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Richard tried and tried, but he could not say it. He wanted the food, but he could not say the words. The guard then tested several other Satanists, and none could speak the words, only gah, gah. It would seem the name of Jesus is unpalatable to Satanists. Amazing, yes? So I'm going to conclude with Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do abundantly more than we could ever ask or even imagine by the power of His Spirit working within us. Amen. Holy Spirit, rain down. Holy Spirit, rain Let your power fall, let your 
your voice be heard Come and change our hearts As we stand on your word Holy Spirit Rain down Holy Spirit Rain Stand on your word, Holy Spirit. 